Hello, and welcome to Hypnosis Today, the nation's first web TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. My name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host, covering a wide variety of subjects to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind and how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve success, happiness, and prosperity. It is my pleasure to introduce you to my guest, Barbara Carey, who's going to teach us about how we are using control dramas. Now, control dramas are how our need for control impacts other people in our lives. Now, Barbara Carey has a private practice in hypnotherapy in Malibu, California, but she is also a very prolific speaker and has just done a seminar for the American Hypnosis Association on controlled dramas. Please help me welcome Barbara Carey. Thank you. So Barbara, what are controlled dramas and how did you find out about them? I got so interested in control dramas after reading the books of Celestine Prophecy back in the 90s. Sure. And one of the insights was about control dramas. And it touched a little bit on them. And I was so interested, especially when I got into hypnosis. And I thought, there's so much more to this that affects every single solitary person. And I did more research on them. And I realized that there are, as the Celestine Prophecy said, four control dramas and how it affects all of us. And the more research that I did, the more that I realized that all of us are using them on a daily basis, on a subconscious level. And when I realized that, I thought, everybody needs to know this. And then I just started spreading the word. Well, what type of control dramas are people using, and how did we develop them? Well, first of all, we absolutely developed them from childhood. And there are four different control dramas. And depending on what our parents were using on us is what we developed. And Lisa, if you can just imagine that our soul, is they're just beautiful bouquet of roses, mm -hmm. okay? And it's just flowers that just need to blossom and they need water. So just imagine this vase that needs water to sustain us. Mm -hmm. And what we're here for is getting this energy from the universe, source energy, and just allowing it to flow constantly so we can live our lives abundantly, powerfully but we don't do that. And what we do is we end up sucking energy from other people because our false belief is that we need to get energy from somebody else and fill our own vase up. Mm -hmm. And that's what we end up doing. And we learned that from our parents or whomever brought us up. Mm -hmm. Can you give us uh, an example of the four different types? Absolutely. The first one is the intimidator. And the best way of describing an intimidator is, let's say, someone that's a school principal. Mm. And you know, very powerful, and it's going to put you in your place and make sure you know who's the boss. And, and normally, the intimidator will attract the second type of control drama, which is the victim. Woe is me. Everything happens to me. Nothing works out for me. Mm -hmm. Everything goes wrong in my life. The third one is the interrogator the interrogator is going to question and question and how come this happened and why are you doing this and why is this going on and, and blah, 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 constantly, constantly, constantly. And they normally attract, which is the fourth control drama, which is the aloof. Mm. And the aloof, you don't know what is quite going on in their life. Maybe they're doing it, maybe not. Maybe they're happy, maybe they're not happy. And again, depending on what your parent was, and you mirrored or were the complete opposite of one parent, the one that you were identifying with. So if one of your parents, in my case, was aloof, so I aloof became... Meaning inaccessible. You never knew what yes. was going on with him or her internally. And with my mother, she was aloof. Uh -huh. So I became the interrogator. So I would interrogate her to pull information out of her, uh -huh. where her aloof drama to, to pull information out of me was pulling back so I would come forward. Looks a little bit like a tango that one pulls back to get filled and one comes forward to get filled. Absolutely. Help me out And here. then it yeah. switches sure. around. So help me out here. My mother was a victim. My father was an intimidator. So I could have either been a victim or a 
um, intimidator? Absolutely. I chose to become an intimidator. Okay, so then basically what you were doing is you were matching your father's drama and what you were doing is you were looking at your mother as the victim and you were, in t you were playing the role oh. with your mom. Well. So the role that you were doing with your mom was you were exchanging the energy there with your mom. So we think, just like with defense mechanisms, this is a wonderful, fabulous, terrific way to get our needs met. How can we stop it and get that sustenance from the universe, as, as you were saying? Well, what happens is you're right. We believe falsely that our needs are going to be getting met that way. And they're not getting met that way because we're constantly being drained. We think our vase is getting filled up, but it's like there's a crack in the vase and all of that water just drains out. And then our flowers start to wilt. So we need desperately to go somewhere and suck it out instead of just going to the universe. And hypnosis is absolutely amazing to go into the subconscious mind, to allow the subconscious mind to see that it is protecting us, because it is, it's protecting us. We had to build up this control drama yes. in order to protect ourselves as children. So we want to thank it, okay? We don't want to get upset at it. We want to thank it. Mm -hmm. And then say, okay, thank you for protecting me. But now let's use a different behavior to get our needs met, to allow the universe to fill us up, not having to go to individual people. Because what happens is this doesn't happen just in relationships with a husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, lovers. It happens with parent-child, as yes. you can see. It happens with friends. It happens with co-workers. Uh -huh. And if you start noticing in your life, right now, become the silent witness with everyone in your audience. Right now, just sit down and just take a step back and say, what am I? Am I the intimidator? Am I the interrogator? Am I the victim? Mm -hmm. Am I the aloof? And notice what you are. And right there, as soon as you notice, that doesn't mean it's going to stop. No, because no. you can watch it and say, I'm spiraling out of control. As, as you're spiraling, you're watching it. And you're saying, oh my goodness, I, 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 I'm, I know what's happening. I see what's happening, but I can't stop. And I see myself doing this stuff it, with the smallest things, which is, are absolutely ridiculous. And I see myself becoming the interrogator. And I'm saying, OK, Barbara, stop. Look what you're doing. Uh -huh. And now that I've learned it more, I'm able to stop myself. But in the past, when I first learned about it, I would just observe it and watch it happen. Can you give us a personal example of when you started to watch it happen and how you were able to use your training and your knowledge as a hypnotherapist to stop it in yourself so we can learn how to do it with our clients? Oh, I'll tell you the most ridiculous story ever. Uh -huh. Ridiculous. It's embarrassing to even say. Uh -huh. someone, is, someone is calling me on their cell phone. I don't rec recognize the number, so, you know, and then a minute later calls again. 30 seconds later calls again, 30 mm -hmm. seconds later. So finally I'm answering, I'm like, okay, hello, who is this? Mm -hmm. And it was obviously a wrong number and I said, at first, I'm sorry, this you have the wrong number. Oh, well, okay, well this was the first time that I called. And I said, no, this was about the 10th time that you called. And they said, oh no, it was the first time. I go, no, it was the 10th time. And I can prove to you that it was the 10th time. <laughs> and how come you're telling me it's just the first time? And blah, 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 blah. When did you realize you were the interrogator, and how did you stop? Because I didn't even know this person, and why am I caring that uh -huh. they're not believing me that they've called me 10 times, but yet I had to prove to them uh -huh. that they were not gonna get one over on me, and I had to stop. And I had to say, well, I'm sorry that you have the wrong number. You have a nice day, okay. yes. and let it go. And they were the victim, I'm, I'm sorry, they, 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 they became the victim and they turned into the aloof like, well, what are you talking about? Yes. I, I wasn't, I wasn't uh -huh. calling you. I wasn't doing that. So I attracted that of like course. energy to yes. me, but I played into it. Of course. I played into it and yes. it was ridiculous. Well, you know, Barbara, I teach uh, the, a supervi uh, supervision class where people talk about experiences and uh, their uh, private practices and the time when hypnotherapists have the most of, of, of a challenge or a struggle in their private practices is when an interrogator meets a client who's another interrogator not when an interrogator meets an aloof they have no problem there when a victim hypnotherapist meets a victim client when a intimidator client meets another intimidator 
And so I just want to ask with our studio audience and anybody in the mental health field who's watching at home, has anyone had strong emotions when you run into someone who has the same control drama as you do? Let's have a hand raised. Yeah, good, thank you. What do we do when we run into our own kind as hypnotherapists and also as mental health professionals? Well, that's the biggest button pusher because you're recognizing, and I actually love it, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. I love when another interrogator comes into my life because I watch in amazement of what I used to do. Yes. And I notice, wow, how could anybody have taken me before? Oh my gosh. Yes. I, and, and I'm watching what they're going through and actually can see the pain of why they're doing what they're doing. Yes. So now I'm able to have more compassion for them because I was there yes. and I could see it. Whereas before, if it was there, it was a fight for who was going to outwit the yes. other one and who was going to do. And it, it completely clashes. No one is going to fill each other's vase up there. No. No one's going to be able to, to suck the energy out yeah, of each exactly. other. Exactly. So how can someone in the mental health profession, hypnotherapist, psychotherapist, anybody, right. how can we turn being an interrogator in our private practice into a positive? Well, all of them can be turned around. Tell Absolutely, us. all of them. Uh -huh. Like an intimidator basically can turn into a teacher. So instead mm -hmm. of like putting somebody down, they can lift the person up. Yes. And interrogator is a perfect therapist because instead of questioning someone to needle them, they question someone with love and actually ask them the question that allows the client to think of their own answer to bring them mm. into the light. Yes, beautiful. And then the aloof, if they can express themselves, if they're not comfortable expressing themselves through verbalization, they can express yes. themselves like as an artist or a writer. You know, they can express themselves artistically. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's plenty of different ways. I'm just giving you different examples here. A victim is the perfect social worker. I mean, they can turn what how they felt about themselves and how they felt victimized, and now they can have compassion for a victim and mm -hmm. allow that victim to get themselves out of that victimhood. Beautiful. Now, in your hypnotherapy practice, do you teach this and then teach what some of the solutions are? Oh, absolutely, because I feel like it's so important for them to realize. However, I will never say to a client, you're a victim, you're an intimidator, you're mm -hmm. an interrogator, ever. I think it's so much more powerful when they get it themselves. I will explain all of them. I had one client, for example, was complete victim, complete. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, hmm, I have no idea what I am. I can't even imagine what I am. And I said, that's okay. You think about all of the different control dramas. You go into your life this week, and you notice your behavior, and then you come back next week, and you tell me what you have found. Mm -hmm. And she came back that next week, and she says, oh, I'm a victim. Yes. I can't believe I'm a victim. Yes. And I said, good for you. Good yes. for you. So you don't really look at your behavior. It's much more gentle yes. to look at who you are attracting. And when you find out who you're attracting, Absolutely. boy, you can sure find out with precision what you are. And then you look at your own children and you can see what you're turning your children into. You know, and then I, you know, I have my son now who's like a, a little interrogator back to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, what difference does it make what time I left the office and that it takes me an hour and I got here and yes, I stopped for gas. And he's like, well, it doesn't take 40 minutes to stop for gas. And I'm like, well, I stopped at my friend's house. And, well, you didn't tell me you stopped at your friend's house and he's 12. And I was yes. like, oh my gosh. Well, you know, what, what I say about parenting is memorize this. See, I'm being an intimidator, memorize this. <laughs> <laughs> Your children will never do what you say, but they'll always do what you do. You know, Barbara, this is fascinating. This is an aspect of hypnotherapy that a lot of us are going to want to incorporate in our own practices. How can people get a hold of you and come see you for hypnotherapy? Well, my website is theconfidentmind.com. That's the name of my business. It's The uh -huh. Confident Mind, and I'm located in Malibu, and I'm also on the HMI website. 
Oh, sure, for so the you, Asia by graduates. Yes, absolutely, yes. Now, if people want to come, if other hypnotherapists want to come and visit you and learn how to incorporate these wonderful techniques into their practice, may they also contact oh. you to learn this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, um, one of my control drama seminars, I believe, is airing right now on... HMI Web yes, TV? Yes. Everybody yes. watch HMI Web yes, TV. It's yes, very, very yes, important. Uh, yes, absolutely. Because that gives a lot more detail. That I think that's like a whole hour on on it and how to do it and what to do and and there's a lot more that you know you can incorporate into it, so it's amazing. Wow. You know what? We just ran right up against the clock. Okay. So we're gonna need to take a short break. But I want to thank my guest, Barbara Carey, for joining us. But please stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to talk to a hypnotherapist who sees clients in Brazil from the comfort of her own living room. So stay tuned so you can learn more on hypnosis today. Thank you. As a private practice in hypnotherapy in Malibu, California, but she is also a very prolific speaker and has just done a seminar for the American Hypnosis Association on controlled dramas. Please help me welcome Barbara Carey. Thank you. Thank you. So Barbara, what are controlled dramas and how did you find out about them? I got so interested in controlled dramas after reading the books. A variety of subjects to help you understand the power of the subconscious mind and how hypnosis is being used today to help people achieve success, happiness, and prosperity. It is my pleasure to introduce you to my guest, Barbara Carey, who's going to teach us about how we are using control dramas. Now, control dramas are how our need for control impacts other people in our lives. Now, Barbara Carey had on a daily basis, on a subconscious level, and when I realized that, I thought, Everybody needs to know this. And then I just started spreading the word. Well, what type of control dramas are people using and, and how did we develop them? Well, first of all, we absolutely developed them from childhood and there are four different control dramas. And depending on what our parents were using on us is what we developed. And Lisa, if you can just imagine that our soul, is they're just beautiful Celestine prophecy back in the 90s sure. and one of the insights was about control dramas and it touched a little bit on them and I was so interested especially when I got into hypnosis and I thought there's so much more to this that affects every single solitary person and I did more research on them and I realized that there are as the Celestine prophecy said four control dramas and how it affects all of us and the more research that I did, the more that I realized that all of us are using them. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Hypnosis Today, the nation's first web TV talk show that explores the fascinating world of hypnotherapy. My name is Lisa Mackenberg, and I'll be your host, covering a wide